Hello guys, Nigel here, welcome back. So today is the, I guess this is the fifth video in the in the series of six, three kits, two videos each. And this is the first of the 135th scale Dora from Sorart, this kit here. Um, it's massive, the box is massive, it's unwieldy, the parts are massive, the parts count as massive, everything about it is big, including the price. Um, but if you've seen my previous quick review, you'll know that um, I got mine dirty. I paid £170 for it, and that came with the decals as well. So I was, you know, well made up. Apparently, it's about to be re-released, and a guy from America has told me in the in the comments that it's going to be over a thousand dollars this time round. So that's um, that's a bit of a joke, really. It's not. I don't think it's worth that. It's not that good. Um, so. <clears throat> I'm going to try and do this review as well as I can for you guys, but the trouble is the parts are so big and there's so many of them, um, I'm not going to be able to show you every single piece of intricate detail. What I'll probably do is like show you the masses of sprues of the detail parts, the bigger parts, I mean you could just imagine what they're going to be like. So um, without further ado, let's get to the bench and see what we can do. And um, and just before I do, I've got myself a new Logitech C920. So this is being done on the iPhone as usual, as was the box review that you're about to see. Um, but then all the parts, the sprue and everything, the sprues and everything, will be done with this new Logitech. So please bear with me. I'm learning. I need to find out a few tuning aspects of it. And if you've got any hints and tips, then let me know. If you see stuff going wrong, let me know how I can get around it. So. Um, so uh, let's, yes, I did edit there because I coughed. So yeah, let's go and have a look at the bench. Okay, so here we go. And what we'll do is we'll start this video with a quick walk around the box. Um, this box is massive. Um, that's an 18 inch rule there across the top of the box. So you can see just how big it is. Um, go around the side here, we've got some detail about the finished model. And then come around the ends. We've got the uh, the symbol there, that symbol there, where's the camera there, um, that's one of the original symbols used by the the guys, the Krupp, that built this thing. Um, and then on the side of the box here, we've got some historic photos, and I believe they're all taken from the, the book that I use. There's some more information about the model there. And then on the end, we've got the like the hammer and anvil side there which was also used so i think you've seen this before but we'll just have a look i'll check this rule before the box is kind of an outer carcass which is covering six other boxes so we've got a box here which is fairly large not quite light and then we've got four boxes underneath So, here we go. So what I'll do, I'll take each one of these boxes out one by one and we'll look at the parts on the bench. Because I'm out of the landing now, there's no way I can actually... I mean, I've got a fairly large landing. Here we go. I'm actually coming up into one of the spare bedrooms. It's, um, yeah, it's a monster of a kit. God knows how you'd ever build it. But uh, maybe we'll find out, eh? Okay, so you've seen the box. Um, and if you've seen my previous video uh, with a quick showing of this kit, then you've seen the instructions. If you haven't, then go back and have a look. Because what I'm going to do here is just literally flick through very, very quick and, uh, and show you exactly what's going on. Um, <clears throat> so here we've got some history about the uh, about the, the gun itself. You can see the effective range, 40 kilometres, 53 degrees maximum elevation. I think it was actually 58. Um, and the barrel weight was 400 tons. I mean, crazy, absolutely crazy. And 7,100 kilos of shell weight. I got a feeling that was the complete capacity of a um, of a uh, B-17 bomber in the same period, in the same time period. So some historic photos there. I think they're all taken from the book that I use. Um, lovely crisp black and white photos. Um, the other thing I'm going to do in this review is a review. It's not a corrections review. This is just a review. I'm not going to talk about accuracy at all. 
So um, yeah, we can see we've got the hundreds and hundreds of parts. There's over 3,000 parts in this kit, but I'm not sure if you actually use all 3,000. Um, for example, you've got 20 of this sprue here, 29 of these, three of these. You know, you don't use all of the parts. And um, one other thing I will show you while I'm here. Um, these are basically the parts that were broken off the sprues. Um, some are broken. You see them in a bag there. They're actually broken parts. And the rest of these are all parts that are off the sprues. Um, and interestingly, this part here, I think it's B15. Yeah, B14. That's how it comes. Um, there's 16 of them. And that's how they come <laughs> as a separate piece, just cut off a bigger sprue. So uh, you can see it there, B14 times 16, which is a little, it's like an afterthought. So, um, yeah, um, whoops, that goes back in with there. That leaves all the parts that I've got in there. So, uh, yeah, so here's all the parts. I've got metal rails, um, huge, huge side structures, uh, the barrel split in halves. It's very nice. It's got, I'll show you that in a minute. It's got a very nice join on the uh, barrel. And then we've got photo etch, screw, spring, wire. And then we're into the build. And we're starting off with the brake mechanism and some springs here. Then we're into actually assembling the rail cars, 10 axles on each, which you know is wrong. Uh, then we've got the end plates here with the buffers on. Apparently there's an issue with the buffers. I've yet to find out. Um, it could just be that I know that one's supposed to be flat and one's supposed to be dished, and these are both um, dished, which is probably incorrect. Uh, so you could use some off a Dragon kit or a Trumpeter kit or buy the RB Productions brass ones. Um, I said I wasn't going to mention accuracy, sorry. Um, we've got the um, the uh, bearing carriers going on there, and then there's a brake. Um, adding some railings here, and then we're starting on the actual gun mount itself. We've got a, a tooth to fare there, which actually, I guess, the gun ratchets in. Got some, what I think is toolboxes on the back there. More railings there. There's some supports for the side railings. And then we've got um, the actual main. This, this part here is called the subordinate. You've got the bogies, which are the rail cars. And then on top of them, you've got the sub carriers. And then on top of them, you've got these are called the subordinates. And then this is the actual gun carrier. So um, this is how it was all built up on the uh, on the railway line at its firing location. So you can see it all being built up there. And then we've got some um, jack parts going in by the look of it. And then some jack parts going on the outside. Then we've got the actual breech itself, which you see the size of that. Starting putting the gun together. Please tell me, guys, is this part of the gun, is that called the breech? Because that goes to there and then the barrel goes on the front of there. Is that the breech? Please tell me. Um, Assembling the rest of the barrel, bottled all the barrel together, and then we've got some screws, and then we've got the uh, brackets that hold the, the two halves together. Shame they're not in two halves. Yeah, I'd have thought they'd have, been, they'd have come in two halves. So if you wanted to display it as a separate, you could. Hobby Boss one does. Um, then we've got the loading ramps at the back, which are just um, basically channels where the uh, the shell would have been pushed along. Then we've got the insertion trolley, as I call it. This would be the one that actually pushes the stuff in, pushes the charges in. Then we've got the chute that the, um, the actual shell sits on. And then we've got the boxes in here and the bracketry there that holds the thing together. Engine house, no engine included, but you get a um, you get all the doors, more railings, exhaust system. More supports for the back winches. Then we've got the uh, the lifts that go in. These are the uh, rails that lifts run up and down in. Then we've got some loading trolleys, some more ladders. There's the lifts again at the back there. And then we've got the track, the track base. And there's um, there's a few of these. And then you've got all your your parts going on here. Um, F1, F1, it's saying times two, times two. I think there's more than that. We should have to see. And then, uh, yeah, track joiners here. Just join the tracks together. And that's that. So there's your instructions. Oh, and on the back, there's a picture of uh, Hitler himself looking at this uh, big weapon. So there we go. Um, so let's have a look at some plastic. 
Okay, so I just thought of guys before we um before we crack on, um if you're lucky enough to have one of these kits or you buy one in the near future, and it's this black styrene that it comes in before we start looking at the plastic, um it's a kind of ABS. So ordinary Tammy extra thin won't work. It hardly sticks it at all. So you need to look at the alternatives that are out there. You'll see some talk about it online, but the trouble is the talk you see online. These two weren't available and you'll see some of the talk uh, if you look on the large scale model website I recommend this um, because it would actually stick it it would actually melt it you brush tabby extra thin on this stuff it's just like brushing enamel thinners on a piece of glass it just doesn't really affect it at all so what I did um, I, because I've got these two these are newer than these and they're not new out but they're they're recent ish um, what I did, I got a piece of the sprue like this, like this one here, and I cut it in three places um, so I could try it with these three glues on a square cut joint. So here you can see I've actually done a test and broken it. Um, I was going to do it live online, but I didn't. I wasn't sure if it doesn't break. It didn't break at all. Then that would have been sort of non-conclusive. Here you can see on the left hand side is as the glues are laid out here. This one is the Tammy Extra Thin Quick Setting. The middle one that's broken was the EMA Plastic Weld. And there's another one there you can see the joint in that part, which is Mr. Cement Deluxe. And what I did then, I then got them and I held it on the end and here and tried to snap it. And it broke pretty much straight away in the middle. And since then, you can see the dent. I've tried to snap this with pliers and everything, and I cannot break it for the life of me. The Tammy Extra Thin Quick Setting Joint, I cannot break. And this one here, I cannot break. Um, it is easily as strong as the parent material. I cannot snap that at all. So, really, that one's now gone. So we're down to these two. Now... You can see in here, I think this one is slightly thicker than this one, although I think the benefit with this one is it smells a lot less. But just one problem with it is just look at the size of that brush compared to the Tamiya brush. It's like being in a bloody chemical factory. Yeah, if you look at the size of those brushes, it's obvious that this one's going to be the easy one to use. But then the beauty is when you've got large areas to glue, which you have a lot on this kit, use this one. And for the detail stuff, do this one and you know it's going to work. So, um, yeah, this stuff is very, very hot. Um, it's just like methylene chloride. It's bloody so hot. It's untrue. But unfortunately, it stinks. This one doesn't smell quite so bad. Um, it's not quite as hot, but it works. So uh, there you go. Mr. Hobby, Mr. Cement Deluxe, and Tammy Extra Thin Quick Setting. Right, I'll start by saying that I started off by telling you a lie. Um, I said there were six boxes. There's actually five. Obviously, the main carton that it comes in the class of matters box one. So what I'm going to do is show you this breakdown in box number by box number, because I'm not going to do it in one shoot. It's now, what is it now? It's midnight on Tuesday night going into Wednesday morning um, and if I were to do this review now I'd probably be up till four in the morning doing all the editing and stuff so I'm going to do some now and then some tomorrow and hopefully get it finished tomorrow and get it up for you tomorrow night which will be Wednesday night but to you it'll be now. <laughs> um, so yeah let's start with box two and box two contains the subordinates and as you can see they're really really small and really really light. Um, to give you an idea of the size, here's that bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin again. That's the quick setting one. Um, it's massive. This kit is massive. I've just weighed these two things, these two subordinates, and with their inner parts, they weigh just over three kilos. So, yeah, quite incredible. Um, so then, anyway, these, this is the detail you get on the, uh, on the plastic. It's a little bit chunky. You can see here where there's pipe work where they've left the middle a bit raised, but it's there. It'll all take a dry brushing. 
when you get it it's extremely oily um it needs a wash i've washed all of mine now um and you can see you get the detail on the side for the hydraulic jacks and everything you know about my feelings on that and and then we've got all the locations going along here these are where all the hand wheels go and correctly they go all the way to the ends so that's the actual main main subordinate that's the main side of the product that then you see most and then you've got the inner side to that panel which is here um you can see again it's 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 huge um unfortunately there's no detail here where there should be and there's no detail on the back where there should be this is knocking everything over on my bench because it's so long i kind of work into a corner so across here is all my tools and everything and then down here is my paints and just behind me is my uh, spray boot so I don't work in a wide open area um so yeah maybe if i build this i'm gonna have to i think so yeah all been washed all nice and um clean i've just noticed there's something i haven't noticed before they've depicted a lovely weld seam down in there which is really nice i don't know if you can see that in there that is nice very nice it's lovely I didn't, i've never noticed that before can you put on the outside as well yes they have look really nice get a wash in there it's going to stand out really well um and you're going to need all you can to add some interest to this because it's all pans are gray so that's the subordinates obviously there's two of each of these and they are handed left and right they do have a front and back believe it or not um so yeah there you go also in this box we get these two parts here which I haven't yet opened because I haven't washed um, and it's going to be a bag I can't open because I'm on camera and here we go this is the ends these are the ends of the um, of the track pieces and just to give you an idea of size let's get a rule yeah those sleepers are 15 mil wide and they've done a one-piece sleeper apparently they did do this on the uh, Dora and if they did there was a joiner in the middle so that's something to look at so yeah um we'll look at the tracks in a minute we'll see how they go in these but uh you can see there if you want to make a really small diorama you could do that <laughs> so yeah at least they give you the ends which is more than was uh, the case on the 144 scale kit eh? so that's box number two let's move on to box number three and just before i do bag this back up this is quite a simple one to show you what is really nice with this kit they every bag is labeled so it's telling you here captain <laughs> captain number two carton number two and it's part number f5 and it's the second bag of two so if there were 15 bags apart this would say the second bag of 15 so you can basically go through the box count the bags if there's 15 bags you know you're good to go and then you can start counting the innards of the bags so it's um it's a really good reference point um i did that straight away when i bought this kit because when i bought it it had been previously owned and somebody else had actually gone through and ticked everything off in the instructions but i did it again just in case and so we're on to carton number three and this is all you get in here just this little bag of um track parts which weighs a ton and there's one two there are only four in here there's only four sections of these um and they are quite large um, in fact i'll measure one for you now and they're double bagged by the look of it Oh, I see you now this. That's a good idea. There's a bag of screw connect uh, screw connectors, track connectors, actually in the in the box, sellotape to one of the uh, one of the parts. So there's that protective foam in there as well, a la Hobby Boss trumpeter. Um, not quite a slower, but it's there. And this is what you're trying to get out. The live video is really incredible isn't it um so yeah this foam is actually still taped on not quite as good as um trumpeter and hobby boss give you but they're than the, nonetheless less than so uh yeah sell the tape out of the way so there we go that is 500 millimeters long and the actual bed across the top is what's that 260 millimeters wide so yeah 
um, quite big. It's got some nice, nice detail on the um, on the ballast. It's got a very, very kind of matte, almost a coal-like finish to it. Uh, probably could do with just putting some more ballast over the top of it, but um, I'm not sure if it's over skill. It's a little large, perhaps. I don't know. I've got some injection in injection points there not ejection injection points there 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 and there so there's what's that eight injection points and then absolutely solid on the back very unlike the hobby boss remember the hobby boss one was very very flimsy this isn't going to need any support at all it's absolutely solid um i believe the width of the track the gauge of the track is incorrect but uh, we'll see when we get there on the corrections video. But uh, no, oh, and it stands, measuring on the angle, so it's about 35 millimetres high, 32 millimetres high. So, um, yeah, and it weighs an absolute ton. All right, we're along to uh, box number four now. And uh, this is the first pack I've pulled out. I, I'll do the boxes in order, but I'm not going to do the packs in any particular order. So you can see we've got four of these sprues in here. So we'll just look at one of them. Uh, if there's anything missing, we'll look at another one. So this is basically now railings. Um, this is railing for the area at the front where you've got the angled part. This will be part of a toolbox or a step or something. Um, this is part of the upper structure, more railings, detail parts, a hand wheel there. As you can see, molding is, um, the molding is quite crisp, but, uh, why won't it focus? Come on. There we go. Molding is quite crisp, but, um, you know, not, not perfect. Uh, this is a fairly old kit now, so we have to remember that. And uh, then we've got the, here we've got the ladders that go up the sides with the railings nicely depicted. But you've got to join the rungs in the middle, so you've got two halves. And they go together like this, and you can see there's some damage on there. These, these sprues, I think I mentioned already, they really are, you know, crammed into these boxes. Um, as you can see here, you know, these, these four sprues are just in like this and then they're like that and they've got loads of stuff on top of them. So, um, yeah, so there's, there's that one. Um, oh, I won't bother putting them back in. It's not going to let me, is it? So, also another one. And there's another bag crammed with sprues. And there are, again, I think this is four sprues of the same. Got some big arm there so uh, yeah these are the yeah there's one two three four five six seven there's eight of these so um this is there's another loose part this is the um the mechanism for the front where the uh well the front and the rear where the clamps pull the um pull the two sides together you know what hold it together we've got some nice would affect there on some steps which is probably a bit over scale but never mind um this is going to be this is going to be part of the uh the barrel perhaps i don't know these are the steps here that go up to the um go up to the front on the on the rail cars uh part of a toolbox again i think like as i say this is all part of the um mechanism that holds it all together in halves put those two loose parts back in the bag I'm running out of space here. Um, we've got another little pair of sprues here. Um, yeah, again, this is another pair of the same. And these are the, this are going to be some walkways. These would be mesh in real life, I think. Some were mesh and some were diamond plate. This looks like it may have been mesh, I don't know. And then we've got more railings here. And this is the end frame that goes on the end of the um, the rail car. As I say, this is ABS and it's very, very strong. So it's taken all this bending and, you know, you can see how bent that is. Um, it's taken all that in its stride um, in the box. Now, the later ones, I believe, are styrene. I don't think they would be so, uh, so forgiving. So, you know, these tiny little handles here, you can see where these tiny handles join the, uh, join the sprue. They would probably be snapped off. On the newer kits so yeah worth uh, worth looking out for that and then in here we've got 
these would be parts of the recoil mechanism I guess they want to go inside the other yep it makes storage a bit easier so yeah we've got some nice bolt detail on the end of there and uh, yeah again two of those um, that is one of the beauties of this gun for the manufacturers there will be a lot of doubled up screws because it's really a gun of two halves um, this is the final smaller screws I can think uh, what's this one this is this is going to be some wood now whoops where that go I'm going to grab that before the dog grabs it um, this will be the uh, the wood panelling for the end of the the, the bogies um, some other parts but parts of the winch here you can see how big that is you look at my fingers it's huge um, some more parts of the structure another tread plate there and then here on the end we've got a slide molded we've got the um, the actual this is the part where the arms come out the arms come out of this and they uh, they fit into um, fit into the the um, the subordinates and, and clamp it all together with those long arms we saw in the previous sprue and then we've got as I say we've got two of those so um over those that are together in the bag and then we've got these parts here which I think are part of the recoil mechanism again and they're loose in the uh, loose in the box or in the bag should I say there's a lot a lot of loose parts um as I say because of one is the sprue design. You'll notice this is very much like old AMT, you know, the old American car kits. It's kind of those kind of sprues. Um, I'm sorry about the taking the time putting the parts back in the bags, guys. But if I don't, I'll never ever get them back in the right bags again. Um, and then over here, we've got the largest sprue here. So we've got two great big parts of the rear walkways I believe this is so uh, yeah some nice ejector pin marks on there if that's the side that's exposed that's going to take some work um, you can see they're quite big again very shiny very strong ABS plastic I'm assuming that is going to be the size that's displayed because on the back we've got a part of WCM2 there um, so I'm thinking this will be exposed that's going to need a lot of work but they are all raised so it should be just a case of sanding them out and then we've got this one here um, I'm assuming this is part of the loading chute for the uh, for where the shells go in we've got some ends of some tubes or something part, part of the recoil the engine the engine the gun mount this is the exhaust system um, yeah I think that could do a bit of work and then this is the rear part of the rear loading area where the uh, trolleys would come in and load into the, the shells into the um into the breech so yes yeah, so, so it's, it's very very large and very very chunky um to give you an idea of size let me just park this here and here is a 135th scale kuba wagon um so that gives you an idea this is a model i built many years ago um yeah so you can see the size of all this now especially if i put that on there where you've got the weapons loading I and mean, that kuba wagon practically sits in those in those troughs where the um you know where the trolleys would go or the loading trolleys should i say so yeah it's all that uh, it's all quite large and heavy and, and chunky um but 35th scale you know being chunky is maybe not such a bad thing it's, it's certainly not like a 72nd scale aircraft that I could mention that you've seen me review um, and here's the <laughs> I call this the breech it's probably not but it's the end of the barrel it's the barrel pivot here um, I think I mentioned earlier about this lovely join they've got if you look they've done like a like a dovetail um, um, not dovetail what is it um, yeah dovetail joint uh, not a dovetail joint no um, a lapping joint so you've got one flange fits inside the other so it fits together i mean it, it does actually fit together really really nicely um you know glue that together hold it tight for a few days get plenty of glue down the inside you know that's, that's going to be very very solid but um that is one big old gun 
again there's the Kuba wagon and there's the gun <laughs> it's just ridiculous it's immense um, you could probably drive the Kuba wagon down the side there yeah you could so yeah you could probably have driven the Kuba wagon in there if you took the mirrors down took the mirrors out yeah big big and heavy and chunky and finally for this box um not sure what this is it looks like it's part of the rear um loading area but i'm not sure if it's perhaps the top of the engine house um but it's part of that area because you can see it's got this this sort of tread pat this um walkway pattern here with the rail tracks in it that the um the rail cars were running out of so you sort of maybe wonder why they've got these tracks when you bear in mind the shell weighed seven tons um, they needed some sort of guys rolling it around on. So there we go, guys. There's box four. Uh, now we'll move on to box five. The next two boxes get pretty busy. There's a lot in them. And here we go with box number five. Now, this is a wheelie big box, a wheelie wheelie big box. And it's full of lots and lots of wheels, as you can see here. And there should be 80 wheels. Um, and you can see the detail on the face is quite nice. Um... You've got that cut out there what that's for i don't know it may be some sort of tooling handling um and then you've got the back face there with the part number on b15 but i don't think anyone's ever going to see that um we'll get back to these in the accuracy video but out of all the three kits i think they're probably by far the best I mean, the rim is small they're 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 nice so i'm just going to count those up a minute and get them back in the bag and then we'll start looking at the sprues Right, so here's um, here's sprue B, and you can see there's one of the hand wheels missing there. But most of these little sprues with the smaller parts have got something missing. But they've all I've, I've got them all in a separate box, as I showed you earlier. So um, yeah, this has got all the hand wheels on. There's the axles, part of the brake. I think this is part of the braking mechanism. As you can see, it's all very cleanly moulded. Um, you know, particularly for ABS, it, it's it's very sharp and. There's a little seam on and everything, but you know, you're going to get that on anything. It's very much like a sort of circa 90s Ravel kit, as far as the moulding goes. Um, or even like an early Tamiya, maybe. But um, it's not it's not too flashy, and it's, you know, it's not bad. Um, but there you go. And there's no less than 20 of these. And you can see I've got them all here. One little tip for you guys, if you are going to get this kit, and you think you might build it one day i think it's worth getting the bags open going through just check you've got all the parts nothing's damaged nothing's missing and then i've got these little tesco's freezer bags they come in three different sizes these are the small and then you can pack all your parts up in these bags you know pump all the air out seal them up and then seal them all up in a bigger bag and it means they're going to stay protected better inside the box and um and you're not going to lose anything if parts do fall off They'll stay within the bag, and there we go. We can get all the air out, seal it up. Job's done, and then that can go over here with its lens. Then we've got this sprue here. This is um, this is part of the the charge. This will be white linen material, so that needs some work. Um, this is part of the loading ram, I think. And then we've got some hatch detail with some steps there. And then this is also a part of the um, I think this is the back of the actual the charge that goes in behind the shell so there's that one get that back in there i don't think you'd ever see a bigger review of any plastic kit on the planet with more sprues in it that takes longer to do than, than this um, i certainly don't want to do this twice if i found out the camera hadn't worked or if i lost this i wouldn't do it again so if you don't see this you know what's happened so this is sprue C. Um, this is called sprue C 1 to 29. And as you can see here, I think we're all complete. It looks pretty much complete. We've got the more woodwork for the um, for the bogey units there with some nice wood grain on it. A lot of people replace this with wood. I don't really know why, because it's quite nice, I think. Um, and we've got this huge bolt headed pivot part here, parts of the brakes, handles. Um, wheels for the loaders and then we've got the end of some cylinders here 
Um, these are the steps that go up the back, that go up the sides um, for the uh, guys to get up to the top. And then we've got more parts of the brake mechanism here. More bits and pieces, odds and ends, bracketry for, for steps and stuff there. But yeah, it's all um, it's all there. Now that is C one to twenty nine, and there's three of those. Now they've made a very very similar screw, as you can see here. So it's the same screw, but without the wood on it, and they've called that C two, I think, to twenty nine. And there's thirty one of these. 31 of the same sprue. Most kits don't even have 31 sprues in them. 31 of the same sprue plus those makes 34 sprues C's. So, you know, fill your boots, guys. <laughs> you can have some fun with that. And I think what is worth doing, because this box is so ram packed, I think it'd be worth decanting those parts into like a, a parts box all individually rather than shoving it all back in the box and it getting broken. Um, so that's those gone through. Then the other thing we get in this box is four of these. These are the cars that go between. You get the that side of that, and then you got the uh, the bogies here, either way. And then the main subordinate comes off of off the top there, like that sort of goes out here. And you can see these are, um, you know, let's get the Cooper wagon out again. They're pretty big. They're quite large. If you stand the Cooper wagon on the side of it, you can see just how big it is there. So it's actually taller than the Kuba wagon. Um, talk about these more when we get to the corrections video, but uh, yeah, there's quite a lot to talk about with those. And you get four of those, obviously. And then here's the massive, uh, massive frames. These are huge. These are what the guns actually pivot in. And you can see there's a lot of detail molded in with pipelines and you know, these are where all the hand wheels go. We've got some cylinders here, all hydraulic valves and stuff. And lots more stuff up here it's all there as you can see if i get the camera to focus there we go you can see it's all pretty clean but again at this scale you may want to take it off and add your own pipe work i don't know but then with the wash and stuff and the thing is you can't really weather it because realistically because it was never really got dirty it would have had rain marks on it and stuff but it, it didn't really see much use so um you can't really go to town with it unless you want to use some of your artistic license obviously there's two of those massive as they are they're like the weight that's like the weight of a 35th scale tank kit before you build it a good one um now we've got the photo it just comes in a neat wallet so it's all pretty well protected and these see this is the photo etch for the um for, the, for these so they go on there and as you can see and then we've got some steps walkways handles but nothing much really some bits of mesh for um for various different bits and pieces so there we go this is this um is missing on the other two kits there is between the subordinates behind the breech or under the breech you've got this mesh walkway uh, I think it's just to catch anything falling through, perhaps. I don't know. But, um, yeah, but that's that's what that is. So they are telling you photo etched, just in case you think you might want to throw that away. Never mind putting that back in the bag. Right there. Put that car back over there. Uh, then we've got a bag of screws. Those rail cars are screwed together, so you're just, they're just all lumped in together not like your tamia bag a bag b bag c they're just all chucked in um i haven't checked if they're all there but if there's something missing i'll know i'll have a replacement from my many tamia rc cars then we've got a bag here with a spring or three springs um some copper wire and some looks like elastic thread so that's all that's all good We've got the rails, these are metal, metal rail tracks. Um, let's see if I can get one out. That's quite easy to make a hole in the end of the bag. Come on, there we 
these are aluminium and they're um very very light and uh yeah they're quite nice they look like they may be to scale if not slightly over um they're certainly more in scale than the uh than the hobby boss offering in fact they're about the same size as the hobby boss, hobby boss offering and bearing in mind the hobby boss is 70 second scale you see what i mean but it's got the nice wide flat bottom on it as well so um yeah they're probably well worth using um how tall are they they are eight millimeters tall so that's yeah they're probably slightly too tall they're going to be around about 10 11 inches in scale um which is slightly too tall but the problem i find if you if you look at replacing these with something smaller um because the track clamps are so high you end up with the wheels sitting on the track clamps you certainly do on the other two kits anyway so uh, you'll see more of that when i get to it so there we go that is box number five and finally box number six this is the biggest box with the most parts in it and the biggest sprues so i'm going to struggle to get all this in i think so we get eight of these uh and these are the obviously the the suspension mounts and they've got some some nice detail on the side of there you can see some nice bolt detail and everything um at least spring detail on the inside it's all there so that's all very nice um but if you look, if you've seen other the other videos as you know then this should be two lots of five not one lot of eight uh, one lot of ten and um i'll cover that in my corrections video for this kit because there's it's more than meets the eye let's put it that way so we get eight of those right let's start digging in this box i have got here a bag of bits with some walkways um i've got some more wood grain parts here for the rail cars this is the this is the walkway that goes underneath the barrel across the two underneath the breech um don't remember what that is a big part there but it's big and chunky and we've got a big hexagonal piece of plastic but you'll feel going nuts um here's part of the loaders this is what goes on either side and the cranes would be back here and then they would load up and down these trolleys this i know should be actual um diamond plating it is it's not mesh so that is correct for the kit so they go in there i know i'm going to be half an hour getting this back in this box because when i washed it all i know it took me a long time to get it all there and sort of then so um let's see we go here's another one of those particularly small sprues um Anyone would think this is a 70 second scale kit, wouldn't they? The tiny parts in it. This is uh, this is the rear frame. These go um, this way, vertically on the sides, and that's where they. There's some railings here, and that's where they, they go along here, along there to um, to load the uh, the shells. They've got some loose parts in there, part of the um, the breech or the, the gun. Just show you those. Yeah, there's two of these. That's part of the um, breach mechanism, I think. Yeah, so that's all uh, all big and chunky. And I mean, and as I say, this here, those parts there are about heavy, as heavy as a wing nut wings, Felix no wings. They're really heavy. Um, here's a bit of a smaller screw, easier to handle more walkways now i believe all these should be mesh so if you want to build this kit you want to make it a bit more accurate i think these should be mesh but they've got some lovely um detail on them they'll be great for the spares box for tread plate and stuff but uh yeah i think they should be mesh so there we go and these are some part i can't remember where they go that's a lot of help to you i know but if you go back in the instructions you'll see there's two of those so uh I've got my, I don't know if you can hear, but I've got my dog to my left is actually trying to um, get these sprues out of the box to help me. I don't think she wants to get the sprues out of the box to show you guys. I think she's got an ulterior motive. 
so here's another pair of match screws I usually enjoy doing screw reviews I've got to be honest I'm not particularly enjoying this because it's so much work um, so part of the structure I believe this is part of the structure that goes inside uh, these are the boxes yes it is so they, they go up against each other like that and there's the the rest of the box there that they fit onto um, and then we've got part of the loader here and we've got shell half um, this looks like the um, instrument panel shroud on a jet fighter I don't think it is um, some lovely detail on there some lovely um, bulk detail I remember we said before all these bolts on this thing all have this cross in the middle and um, it's a little bit unfortunate they've got them all orientated so they're all pointing outwards um, it would have been better if they were a bit scattered because they probably wouldn't have all looked like that in real life even though they were German um, and another bit of a walkway there I think this is one of the lifting ramps actually this is one of the lifts at the back where they put the um, the, the trolley on with the shells so I'm not going to even attempt to get that back in the bag while you're on the camera guys so let me get that one out of your way Um, oh, here's a tiny little part. This is the breech. As you see, here's part of the recoil mechanism, and this is the breech. Cooper wagon back. There we go. That's how big the breech is on this gun. I mean, if you look at this, it's like a garage for the Cooper wagon. It's um, it's bloody huge. There's the recoil there. So you can see the two together there. You can see how big they are. Absolutely mental. Mental, crazy, huge, and everything. For now, uh, another pair of um, mirrored sprues. This is one of the, this has come off the sprue, it shouldn't have. Um, this is part of the toolbox, I think, for the back. It sits on the, the back end of the, uh, the firing area. And then we've got some more railings here. As you can see, these are all twisted and bowed and buckled. And But, I mean, this plastic is so strong, it's untrue. Um, more railings, more about those later. Yeah, so that's sprue G. So we'll put those back together carefully so that you don't break any more of those off, those ladders, ladder rungs. Where's the end of the bag? Back in there loosely. It's back in there. Right, what else have we got here? Here's the other parts of the So there's the actual breech block there. You can see that by there, you can see how big it is from the size of my hands. Um, and more bits of the recoil mechanism and then we've got these two huge things here which are again parts of the actual structure and they are nearly as long as my A2 um, cutting mat so you can get an idea how big this model is I believe completed this model is seven foot long um, which is what two and a half meters so well, this is never going to get back in this box. Uh, so more parts. This is the this is the part that you get two of in the um, hobby boss kit. This is the again they haven't they haven't put a line in the middle of it a split line. Um, they've put a raised line there. I'm not sure how correct that is. But yeah, there's the um, that's the boxes that you get. Remember I showed you a picture in the book and there's some men working under here. Uh, and they've included that I've got a feeling when you actually look in the photographs I've got a feeling that is like a um, just a shaft like a, a crowbar or something that they've chucked between two holes just to get some rough alignment I must check that in the book again but I think they've molded that in there um, and then here's part of the this is one of the loading trolleys where's the bag open for the rear end I think so uh, yeah nice most detail on there. I'm kind of hoping that that isn't an ejector pin mark. 
because it's bloody deep. So that can go back in there. Um, I've got here another bag. I put this in a large sandwich bag and two sandwich bags. No, we a large sandwich bag inside the proper bag. So we've got what have we got? Four of these. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four of these. Um, all parts of framework. This is the parts of the rods that hold everything together. Um, end plates for the rail cars where the buffers go. All very nice. This is some gearbox covers that go on the sides of the rail cars. I think this is probably the foot plates around the edge. Got some lovely detail on those on those brackets there, which is very nice. Um, the fact that it's black and shiny doesn't really help with review, guys. I'm sorry, but you get an idea of what's there and uh, if you're still awake well done I don't know what this is going like time wise but um, it must be getting close to an hour I think so but then I kept this massive I'm guessing it deserves it um, you know it is over 3,000 parts I've never actually done a sprue count on this it's probably in the region of 50 or 60 sprues that no, must be more than that, it must be 70 or 80 because there's over 30 of that sea sprue alone. Um, I picked up two bags here. All right, I picked up three bags here. So, what have we got here? This is more walkways. Let me get that out. There's nothing much to Oh, yeah, I may as well get these out because these are the, these are the uprights at the back. These sit vertically on the rear end and they are, they are. Well, just over 400 millimeters long so you can get an idea they're going to sit vertically on the back of this thing and they're just over 400 millimeters long so that's giving you some idea of size we've got a slide molded box on the end here which is nice so yeah there we go with that one tell me guys in the comments have any of you got this kit have you built it and there's one guy who's built it and uh He's been asking me about painting advice and stuff, well, paint guides for it, and uh, I did the decal review for him if you remember. These are the sides of the engine house and is the base. Um, this is where the engine actually goes, diesel engine. I think it's just used for um, it's a generator and it's used for you know driving the pulleys and everything, for lifting the, the ammunition up. Uh, I think that's what that's for. There's a couple of um, phallic symbols there for you just in case you need them. and. Um, yeah, some little brackets. This one's actually a bit flashy, this sprue, if you look at And that flash is quite thick as well. That's not going to break off in a hurry. So, but at least it's on the sprue and not so much on the parts. Brackets bag. Um, what else have we got in here? We've been through that one. These are the, this is a, again, the long one. Um, oh, come on, just leave it though. Good girl. We've got a big black round part in the uh, box, and I think she's thinking it's something for her to play with. This is the top of the rail cars, where the um, so you've got the the centre there, and this will be. There's two parts to it. So this will go on top of there like that. Um, so you've got yeah this part here that the wooden everything sits on, and then you've got the angled end here that goes underneath the subordinate. These are the pivot points for the two five axle rail cars, and this is the centre pivot point they've decided to put in for their ten axles. So yeah, that needs to be cut in half, and you'll have two two halves there. Can I get these back in here in efficient time so it doesn't bother you guys too much? Yes, I can. I'm going to be careful of the detail. I'm going to leave that because I don't want to go and destroy that detail putting them back in. Let's do that with that. Little bag here with some parts in. I think this is part of the, um, these are parts you can see the uh, serrated teeth on there. And they're for the actual pivot on the gun. 
This is part of the barrel, I believe, part of the breech. And as you can see, it's huge. Mr. Cooper, I didn't come back again. There we go. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's the bit that opens after. And then here we've got the barrel. And this is going to upset some people because the barrel is in two halves. And it's a basic modelling skill that's been forgotten. And again, we've got this um, tug of groove. That was the word I was looking for earlier. We've got this tug of groove design so that they slot together. So you could basically fill that up with an ABS cement and then squeeze these together, get some bands on them. And you can see the fit is lovely and it does remain very round in section. Um, so that part of the barrel alone is, what's that? That's um, 50, 550 mil, I'd say that part. That's the end of the barrel there. You do get a part that goes in there with rifling. So that's 550 mil. And then that goes on to this part here, which is, do, 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 that bit is 380 millimeters long. So there's that part there. Which you, uh, this is the end of the barrel. This goes into the, um, into the breech at the end. So yeah, all very, very large and very, very heavy and very, very chunky. I ought to weigh the whole kit really. I can't imagine what it costs to mail. I can finally see the bottom of the box. Here's the end parts of the engine house. This is the end wall here and then the back wall. Um, so yeah, there's that's designed to hold an engine in there, I think. <laughs> well, it's just designed to support the sides, as you'd imagine. But um, Big screw here, which is part of the gun pivoting mechanism, I think. Here, Actually, that's massive. Remember that in Hobby Boss kit, that's a quarter of the size, obviously. Um, or half the size, quarter of the area. It's another part of the breech there. There's my hand, massive. Then we've got some more tread plates, some steps back of a toolbox, hexagonal parts there, more bolted flange rings. So yeah, it's actually not a very exciting kit to review because there's just loads and loads and loads of the same. Um, there's another very large sprue here. This this sprue is the size of the A2 cutting mat, and we've got some long tread plate here with the with the uh, the diamond plate on it, and then we've got railings and ladders. They look okay scale wise, some steps there. Um, but more about the railings later. I think you know what's coming with them. If you know this kit at all, you'll definitely know what's coming with them. So I'm going to put these back in the bag because I don't want them getting damaged. And they live in the bottom of the box. And I want to make sure they stay that way. Right, the last three sprues. Here's just more railings. There's no point in getting that one out of the bag. It's literally just two long railings for the uh, loading area. Last two sprues, yay! And there we go. We've got the more and more railings. Oh, this is the this is the railings on the top with the support beams that come up from the bottom. So you'll see those in the uh, main image if you look at the front of the instructions. So they actually. Uh, they're actually quite nice and they're probably pretty much in scale on their size. And here's some more railings for the for the front of the thing. Um, these will be where they go up over the where they walk up up the front up to the edge of the breach. More angled railings there. Some pipe work. I would say that the Hobby Boss kit has probably got more of this pipe work detail than this one has. And there's a ring. I don't know what that does. That's just a a circle. If you look there, I don't know, it's like a circular railing. I can't think where that goes. Um, but yeah, all very nice indeed. So, there you have it, guys. That is the 135th Soul Art Dora Schwerer Gustav railway gun. So, guys, what did you think of that? That's some kitten. It's just taken me, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to get it back in its box. I've got the uh, young lady on my lap now, as you can see, because she um, 
She just tried to get every sprue out of my hand and play with it because, I don't know, her favourite ball is black. So maybe she sees the round parts and thinks, oh, ball. So uh, there we go. So she's now enjoying a bit of fuss with the light in her face. So um, say hi, Jess. Say hello. What's going on there? What's this here? <laughs> right, so that kit. Um, unbelievably, uh, here we go. Here's the, uh, the, the sprue cat and everything. There are 92 sprues. There's 135 loose parts, six PE parts, 109 screws, three springs, two lengths of wire, and four lengths of copper wire. And that's for the gun. And then the bed has 16 rails, four beds, two ends, and four sprues of track joiners. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty immense kit, eh? Uh, and that explains why it took me so long to get it all back in the box. But it's all back in its main box now, back on the landing. And, um, and there it can stay until maybe tomorrow I decide to do my corrections video. Uh, we'll see. Um, it'll be done by the weekend anyway for you guys. Um, it's going to be quite a long one, I think, because uh, there's a lot wrong with it. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching that. If you're still awake, you've done really, really well. I um, hope it wasn't too boring for you. But as I say, it's really, really hard to sort of big up a, a, a box of black ABS plastic um, when you've got so many repeat parts and it's all so big and chunky you know it's I mean I think here's my little Kuba wagon I think probably looking at this yeah it's a Kuba wagon Jess <laughs> I think looking at this is probably a lot more interesting than um, you know that I built this years ago so please don't look at the modeling skill involved in that one um, I could do with actually re-weathering I think because for some reason I don't know what I was thinking I've given it a wash. If you, my dog is really interested in this. Um, I've given it a wash. I don't think you can pick it out on this rubbish camera. Um, it, it's got a wash on it of um, like a, a, a light grey. It's almost like I've like, used flory winter wash on it or something. But anyway, yeah, she's mesmerised by that. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you like what you've seen, then uh, please subscribe. If you want to see more videos, then hit that notification bell. Um, I will be building at least one of these Dora kits and I'm probably going to start with the 144 scale because if you've seen my corrections video there's quite a bit of chopping about I want to do um, and I just want to see if it works and if I've got the, the patience and the stamina to stay with it. So um, I finished work this Friday so I'm going to have 100% of my time devoted to doing what I want to do when I want to do it and that'll be mainly modelling through the winter. And some decorating and then but as soon as spring comes back with the cars so um yeah i'll say it for the third time thanks for watching please like subscribe hit the notifications bell and i'll see you all soon bye bye sorry guys we forgot bye bye say bye bye jess bye <laughs>